Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. La, 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 da, dee, dee, dee. Claudia, why are you so fidgety? Who's fidgety? You are fidgety. Am I? I hadn't noticed me. You've been walking up and down this room like a lion in a cage. Have I? Sounds Look, exciting. you were on the verge of biting your fingernails. I never bite my fingernails. Exactly. So far, you haven't gotten beyond the verge. <laughs> what are you expecting out of that window? I'm not expecting anybody out of this window, especially. Then you are expecting something. I didn't say that. All right, have it your way. If you want to be secretive, I'm not curious. Mama, what time is it? Just five minutes later than it was five minutes ago. Now, that's a nice to-the-point answer. What time is it now? Twenty-five minutes of seven, and all is well. Oh, that's what you think. It'll be time for dinner pretty soon. Why don't you go up and wash? Oh, we're not having dinner until later. Since when? And how much later? Oh, I thought we'd eat around a uh, quarter of eight tonight for a change. Oh, that's interesting. Why the change? Mommy, you're prying. I'm not prying. I'm bursting. <laughs> I know there's a secret around here someplace, and if I don't find it out soon... As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind having somebody to talk to. Here I am. <laughs> you're a fine one. You're always telling me I'm nosy. Look at you. Your nose is as long as the handle of a broom. And I don't see why I have to be insulted in the bargain. But if you want to carry around your secret, grow old before your day, get wrinkles around your eyes, pace up and down this room until I'm dizzy, so be it. I was only offering you a little solace and my motherly bosom in which to confide. Well, all right. Maybe it would help to confide in someone. Anyone. Hmm. But you don't have to if you don't want to. I want to. Well? Where is David? Are you changing the subject? It's a part of the subject. Where is David? He's out walking with young Jeffrey. Oh, good heavens, those two. No grass is going to grow around here if they keep walking so much. It's nice to see them together. David's been like a father to that boy. Mm, he's loved it. Still, a boy's real father is better. That's what I thought when I... You told me you were going to tell me. Remember? Where is Mrs. Killian? Claudia, I am not a witness on the stand. This is not 20 questions. You were going to tell me what's on your mind. She's still upstairs resting? I think so. She and Jeffrey get along like mother and son today, don't they? Not very surprising, considering that's what they are. But they weren't really till today. To think that I brought them together. Pretty wonderful of you. I think so. Here for 16 years, they've been more like aunt and nephew, and one night under our roof... I know, they... like mother and son. Mm. Now, Claudia, I'm ready to listen. To what, Mama? I've been talking. I give up. I'm not curious anymore. I'm just plain exhausted. Even if you were to tell me your great, wonderful secret, I wouldn't be interested. It's not great, and it's not big, and it's not wonderful. Mama, I did something awful today. Is that so unusual? But this is especially awful. This was the sort of thing a maiden aunt would do or a meddling sister-in-law. You're making great sense. I am. That's the worst part of it. Well, meddling aunt, what was it? Mind you, this is the last time I'm going to ask. Mama... I called up Roger. Roger Killian? Yeah. What's so terrible about that? I called him up in Chicago. That's a little extravagant, but not a crime. Oh, you haven't heard the half of it. The other half is an awful long time in coming. I told him to... I told him to get on an airplane and come here right away. Come here? To Eastbrook? Yes. But Claudia, Mrs. Killian is here. I know. And you know that Roger and Mrs. Killian were... They aren't exactly anxious to see each other. I know that, too. Well, no wonder you're fidgety. Now, I'll be on the verge of biting my nails. I thought that maybe if Roger and Mrs. Killian met under our roof, they'd sort of be like husband and wife again. And if they would, it would be marvelous because Jeffrey really needs a father and mother more than anything. Mama, don't just sit there. Say something. I have nothing to say. Well, I don't see what's so terrible about what I've done. After all, I can invite people to my own house, can't I? I thought I'd brought you up to mind your own business. All I did was put two and two together. Two and two have nothing to do with it. You're trying to put a man and his wife together. A man and his wife who are old enough to know whether they want to be together That's or not. That's just it. I don't think they do know. 
They haven't been together for such a long time. Maybe they've forgotten how nice it is. Don't judge everybody else by your own experience. Your husband happens to be a very patient and understanding man. Oh, I knew you'd be angry with me. And if you're angry with me, you can just imagine what David will be. Livid. I don't know how to tell him. Just tell him. David hates meddlers, and I promised him on the altar I wasn't one, but, well, I just couldn't help myself. I think it's miserable for Roger and his wife not to have a home when they have such a nice son as Jeffrey. Claudia, has it ever occurred to you that maybe Mr. and Mrs. Killian are happier apart than together? Of course it occurred to me. What do you think I am? I'd rather not say. They're both so nice. Mrs. Killian's really very nice, too. When you get behind the part of her that isn't so nice. And they're both lonesome. So I thought I'd give them half a chance. You're giving them more than half a chance. You're giving them a whole chance. Did you tell Roger that he'd find his wife here? No, but I was going to, but I didn't. Oh, this is all very cute. Well, when is Roger getting here? <clears throat> oh, it's time I went to the station. Maybe I should just sort of sneak in the car and drive off without telling Dave. Two wrongs don't make a right. You know you're not allowed to drive the car anymore. You're a big help. Why can't you drive? Thank goodness I never learned. Hello, ladies. Hello, David. Now, what's the matter with you two? You look as if you'd been discovered planning a murder or now, something. that's a silly thing to say. Remarkably observant of you, David. <clears throat> David, hmm? are you doing anything now? I am about to light my pipe. I mean, are you doing anything important? Are you insulting my pipe again? I mean... Do you mind lighting it in the car? Is that where the matches are? Oh, <laughs> you're a big help to me. It's so silly. David, how would you like to take me for a drive? Isn't it time for dinner? Heavens, no whites early. Claudia means dinner's late tonight. Oh, it is? Why? Because I want to go for a drive with my husband in the car. What's so awful about that? It's a little unusual. I'm hungry. Oh, you can munch a piece of swiebach on the way. On the way where, Swyback? On the way. <laughs> on the drive that we're going to take. Are you, you trying want... to tell me something? Oh, you're so bright. I'm trying to tell you that I need some toothpaste, so I want to go downtown. Well, I'll go and take your teeth with me, or we'll go after dinner. Let's go, and I go now? Well, our teeth can wait. Oh, you're impossible. Here, I throw myself at your feet. I propose that you take me for a little drive, just the two of us, with a little privacy, and you reject me. I am offended. Mother, your daughter is nuts. This is only the beginning, David. Do me a favor, take her out of here. Thank you, Mama. Well, I don't like to hurt her feelings and make her think I don't want to be in her company, so all right, let's drive. <sighs> but no monkey business. Here we go, Mama. You still haven't told him, Mrs. Budinsky. I wish I knew how I were going to. I would like to see the scene at the station. That's something I'd really like to see. Maybe that's it, Mama. Maybe I shouldn't tell him. Maybe I should just lead him by the nose to the station and let it all happen right there in front of him. You don't mind if we just sit here at the station a few minutes, do you, David? Oh, no, no, no. No place I'd rather be sitting in front of Eastbrook Station. I mean. it's, it's such a nice station to sit in front of. Oh, yes, it's lovely. What are we doing here? Just sitting. But darling, I am not a half-wit. You're not? No. <laughs> I'm not deaf and dumb and blind. I know something is cooking, and if you don't confess, I'll wring your neck. David, did you hear a train? Who are we expecting? Why do we have to expect somebody? Don't you just <laughs> no. like driving me? We bought the toothpaste. We had a lovely drive with you staring out the windows if you expected to see ghosts. Oh, not it was, ghosts. It was charming, yes. I wish I were going to see a ghost. Anything would be better than... Than who? David, whatever you're suspicious of, you're right. Claudia, I know I'm brilliant. I know I'm the most understanding husband in the world. I know I can usually guess just exactly what you're thinking. And I pledge you, I pledge you I won't be angry. So get it off your chest. Not my chest, it's my conscience. Do you hear a train? Well, if it's a train that's on your conscience, no wonder you're finding it difficult to talk. <laughs> there it is, I knew I heard it. Well, darling, you don't have to look so upset. Oh. If you've invited someone up here for a weekend, it's perfectly all right with me. Now, you won't forget that, will you? Promise. And if it's a surprise, so I'm sure it's a good one. 
And nothing for you to worry about. Well, hold on to your hat. Come on, darling. Quick, tell me. Who is it we're meeting at the station? I, I don't want to act like an unwelcome host. Oh, it's somebody you like very, very much. Fine. As a matter of fact, it's somebody you know very, very well. Good. As a matter of fact, it's... Roger. Roger? David, please don't look like that. You invited Roger Why here? Why not? You invited him here lots of times yourself. I know, but this is a lot different. His, his wife's here. You, you know they don't exactly spend so much time together. Well, his son is here, too, and it's about time they did. So, this was the big plot. David, you'll help me, won't you? You got into this yourself, now you help yourself. You see, I thought that if Roger and his wife could sort of meet under our roof, well, they could sort of see how nice it is to be under one roof. <laughs> I always thought there was a fair resemblance between you and Cupid. There he is now, getting off the train. Did you tell him that uh, Mrs. Killian was here? Well, I thought... You'd rather tell him that. Coward. Well, you're so much closer to him than I am, and, and, and when a man meddles, it never seems just like meddling, does it? Oh, Roger, here we are. He's going to get his bags. He'll be right with us soon enough. Now, don't David, rush. I feel devastated. I feel as if I'd done something awful. I feel as if I put the mouse in a trap. Well, that's where mice belong. But is Roger going to mind being a mouse? <laughs> I think in the end, Roger might even be grateful for the trap you've set. You do? Now, this is no suggestion for what you to do at this sort of thing again, but for once, I uh, take off my hat to you. Oh, David. I've been so worried. I've been acting like such a big cheese. Well, every trap must have its cheese, and <laughs> I've always been very fond of cheese. Even still? Especially still. <gasps> and, darling, mm -hmm. if you work as hard on our marriage as you have on Roger's, life is going to be... Very, very sweet. Life will be, darling, because you are. Come on, let's go re meet Roger. And and you can tell him about his wife. Dum, dum, da dum, 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 da dum, dum. La, 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 la. Within the last few years, more and more factories and offices have installed Coca-Cola coolers so that people on the job can work refreshed. But many homemakers forget that they, too, deserve the pause that refreshes. You use up a lot of energy at your household tasks, and it's a good idea to stop for ice-cold refreshment. Moreover, it takes just a few minutes if the refrigerator is well-stocked with Coke. Bring a carton home from the store today and supply your home cooler with delicious enjoyment. Mr. King. Oh, Mr. King, how did everything go at the station? Oh, smooth as pie, Mrs. Brown. That daughter of mine, she'll give me heart failure one of these days. The things she does. Imagine inviting Mr. Killian up here and not telling anyone. So far, so good. I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens. I hope the results are worth the anguish. It's going to be quite a weekend with Mr. and Mrs. Killian and Jeff all in the house. Well, I wish I could be here to see it, but the best I can do is to say that I'll be back on Monday. By Monday, Mr. King, the die will be cast, or the cast will be dead. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I'll be here to find out. See you then, and good luck. Thank you. We'll all need it. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> 